Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse Learning video series. With us today we have Mr. Raymond Gott, who is an orthopedic consultant surgeon at Mother Day Hospital. Thank you for accepting our invitation and being with us here today, Mr. Gott. We will be speaking to you with regards to orthopedic surgery, obviously as a whole, but particularly joint replacement surgery. So my first question to you, innovations and development in medical uh, research and medical treatment has led to increase in life expectancy, and obviously this has had a repercussion on your practice. What can you comment? First of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, yes, life expectancy has increased. Um, I qualified about 30 years ago, and throughout that time, uh, initially we were operating patients uh, that were over 75. Um, and now, now the age limit has increased even in good, very good patients in the 90s and because the quality of life is a most important issue, we've, we're also operating even younger patients. Um, this has been possible because research in, 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 in materials uh, has improved dramatically. So now we have bearings that um, will last quite a substantial length of time. We're talking about 20 years, 25 years, um, with bearings uh, ceramic on ceramic and ceramic on plastic. Um, I think that joint replacement surgery in or orthopedics was the one of the uh, main events that has changed uh, the lifestyle of the population. And undoubtedly, this is the, the reason for behind my second question. In fact, joint replacement surgery has seen a dramatic shift in research and its development, and uh, it is currently a, a very active uh, subject of research. Um, do you agree with this? And what do you see in the future of joint replacement surgery? It is. Uh, the main problem of joint replacement surgery is uh, the bearing that is being used. But as I've said, that's uh, being... Uh, improved and you know to 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 a large extent, but also um, how the joint replacement fits into the in, into the bone. Even in in that in that case, uh, things have improved as well. We are now using uncemented uh, joint replacements. Um, we are using materials that mimic a trabecular bone. Um, one of them is trabecular metal. Um, as I've said, bearings have improved. We're now using ceramic on ceramic, ceramic on plastics. Um, all these will will increase the longevity of the of, of joint replacement. So, um, hopefully, with further research, um, the length, the 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 lifespan of a of a joint replacement would increase even more. Um, we must remember that a joint replacement um, operation has got morbidity for the patient and there is also um, a small mortality issue as well. So for the patient, the most important thing is to have one single operation during his lifetime as much as possible. Joint replacements can be replaced. Um, we do revision surgery as well, but obviously the problems here um, and and the um, complications associated with this operation increase as well. And we're speaking about innovations in this form of surgery. You're explaining the innovations in the materials used for this surgery, but I'm sure that you also know of new innovative techniques and procedures to be used. What do you think um, will happen in this practice in Malta in the coming years with regards to new procedures being introduced here in Malta? Well, the world has um, shrunken, as you know. So anything that happens in the States, happens in uh, mainland Europe, is here with us at the, at the, at the, in an instant. Um, today with, with IT, we're, we're aware of every research that is happening abroad. Um, and that obviously keeps us up to date with all research projects that are happening Outside Malta. Mr. Gott, moving on to speak more particularly on the needs of the local population, how do you see these new innovative techniques uh, help our local population and what needs do you, do you usually address here in Malta? I think um, most patients will usually be referred to us uh, by their general practitioner um, who will know these, these patients much, much more than us. Um, 
obviously a patient that has got a, a painful joint um, will not necessarily need uh, a replacement. Um, the main issue for replacing a joint is basically pain. If a, if a patient has a, a worn joint but he's getting on with his life, um, he, he's certainly not a candidate for an operation. Um, as I've said, we must remember that uh, joint re replacement surgery carries um, uh, an element of morbidity as well. The main indication for replacing anyone's joint is basically pain. Lately as well, any, any, any problems with his quality of life. Um, most all patients want to go through life without pain. They want to remain mobile. They want to carry on with their life. Um, and by replacing their joints, we are helping them in this. And with regards now to the general practitioner, which you rightly mentioned, general practice, um, when they are faced with patients who have a number of morbidities, a number of, of uh, conditions which may affect the outcome of the surgery, how should they tackle it and how do, should they refer patients to you? Should they wait to have these conditions um, alleviated or improved before referring or should you work um, synchronously while seeing the patient at outpatients as well? Yeah, well, I, I think a general practitioner is, is, is uh, uh, the most important person that will guide the patient. As you know, diabetes in Malta is rampant. There's about 12% of the population. Most of our patients are um, obese and some of them are, are verge on the morbidly obese as well. Um, obviously with, with uh, joint that's destroyed they cannot walk um, so they basically sit around and it is, it is a challenge to get these patients down to their ideal weight. Um, a GP work there is very important. Um, as well when, when a patient embarks on this operation they are usually prepared by us, but um, if the uh, if the diabe diabetic state and their hypertensive state are controlled um, before these operations, that would be ideal. And given this multidisciplinary approach between the GP, between the orthopedic team, what other professions are of key note here in the orthopedic practice? We have a, a clinic um, called the Pre-Admission Clinic. Uh, which assesses these patients uh, for surgery. The clinic includes um, the anaesthetist, obviously, who will give the anaesthetic to the patient, but it also includes other paramedical staff, including uh, physiotherapists and occupational therapists, nursing staff, and even a social worker. It is very important because of the fast track that operations these days are done. Um, I can tell you most patients spend two days only in hospital, and by the end of those two days, they would have gone up, um, they would have climbed stairs on their own, they would have walked on their own, they would have transferred out of bed on their own, but they would still need uh, help. And that's where the occupational therapist comes in and, and, and the physio and the social worker, um, because these patients will, will need support. A general practitioner is important because he will know the the environment of, of, of his patients and he would be of help to us as well. Um, if a patient doesn't have um, support then they would be referred to a rehabilitation unit um, at Keringer Hospital um, but that, that would be more difficult. I, I would imagine that the best place for a patient would be in his own environment at home and that would be the ideal. And now that we're nearing the end of our interview, we've discussed joint replacement surgery and its impact on the quality of life of our patients. Given the local population, what is your take-home message to the practitioners out there who are listening to our interview? A joint replacement is a very good operation. Um, if the operation is successful, as, uh, as it is in 98% of cases, pain disappears. But it is not a, an operation without problems. And in an ideal world, the patient that embarks on this type of surgery should be as fit as possible. Thank you, Mr. Gus, for thank dedicating you. your time, for being with us for this interview. We thank our audience and we uh, wish you well with this interview. We hope that it has furthered your knowledge on the subject. And we invite you to share this particular clip with all of your professional colleagues. Thank you for your time.